Okay, now an aircraft can move in three different axes. Okay, I don't have a model on me right now, but um, as opposed to a car, a car can only be steered in one axis, so left and right. But if the aircraft, you can steer it left and right, pitch up and pitch down, and roll left and roll right. So those three axes, yaw, pitch, and roll. And control our roll, for example, we use our control column. You can turn it left, uh, right and left. And if you have a look there on the wing, you see that if I turn the control left, the left aileron goes up. And then if I turn it right, the left aileron goes down. And the opposite is happening on the right aileron. Our yoke can also be used to control our pitch. And that's by applying back pressure or forward pressure. Okay, so if you have a look at the back, at the tail there, if I apply a back pressure, our tail is going to rise. Uh, our elevator, but in this case it's a stabilator, is going to go up. And if I apply forward pressure, it's going to go down. Okay, then finally, uh, in order to control our yaw, we use our rudder pedals, which are these pedals down here. So if I apply right rudder, for example, if you have a look at the tail there, right rudder, tail moves to the right, or rudder moves to the right, and then left rudder, rudder moves to the left. Okay, and that is going to control our yaw as well. Now, these control surfaces are not only linked to a specific type of aircraft, they're on pretty much every single aircraft. So if you have a look at this uh, old bird sitting over here, you can see that we have the aileron. Over here, it's always the outermost surface. And then we have the inboard, uh, sorry, outboard flap and inboard flap. Wow, and then this is where the engine used to be. And then at the back over there on the tail, we'll have the rudder. And in this aircraft, there's actually a rudder trim tab over there. And then uh, our elevator over here with the elevator trim tab over there. And just a fun fact, this here is a Piaggio Albatross. So instead of pulling air from the front, like most uh, propeller aeroplanes, uh, it has the propellers mounted at the back. So it pushes air at the back and that's how it works. Okay, so by turning the control column to the left now, left aileron is going up and when the aileron goes up, as air tries to flow over this wing for, as a simple explanation, as the air tries to flow over this wing, it's going to be deflected upwards. Because you can see the left aileron went up and then on the opposite side right aileron goes down so air flowing under the wing is going to be deflected downwards and by this air being deflected upwards the wing is going to have a reaction bring the left wing down and the right wing up which creates a roll to the left if I apply back pressure now my elevator is going to come up which in turn causes the tail of the aircraft to be deflected downwards causing nose up okay and finally if i apply a right rudder the rudder is going to be deflected to the right and as air tries to flow around the rudder it's going to be deflected in this direction which is going to push the rudder in the opposite direction which will cause the aircraft to yaw to the right but we also have some secondary control surfaces and those can be our flaps and our trim. So our flaps in this aircraft are controlled manually by extending this lever over here and I can set it to a preset position. In this aircraft there's three positions, uh, 10, 25 and 40. So if I set it to 10, if you have a look here at the wing, that's 10 and I set it to the next, that's 25. And then finally, that's 40 degrees. And what the flaps basically do is they increase your lift and your drag. So when you're coming into land, you want to apply some flaps in order to slow down and still maintain a safe um, amount of lift, if that makes any sense. Now trim, this wheel here controls the trim tab. And you can have trim on all three control surfaces. So you can have trim on your elevators, on your rudder, and on your ailerons. And what trim does is it aerodynamically holds the control surface in its position. Okay, so this 
little wheel controls the trim tab on the back so if I roll it all the way to the back and we go have a look at the elevator now uh, just to clarify this is an anti-servo tab as opposed to a trim tab but the principle works the same by rolling the trim tab all the way to the back you see that the trim tab is now below our stabilator which when air is trying to flow over here this air is going to be deflected downwards on the trim tab which is going to lift our elevator until it's flush so pretty much locking this uh, elevator or stabilator in this case into whatever position we need for that specific phase of flight okay and if i trim it the other way the opposite is going to happen it's going to be deflected to the top and as air tries to flow over the top it's going to be deflected up bringing the stabilator to a new different position if you like these videos uh, thanks for watching all the way to the end first of all and leave a like share and uh, subscribe for more and uh, please let me know in the comments if uh, you want anything in particular done for you but for now let me leave you with this amazing landing Oof, butter.